So this is the second time I'm recording this video. Yesterday I recorded it. I talked about it on an Instagram story. I went through the whole thing, and when I went to play it back so that I could edit it, all of the little sections that I record, because I do sections, I, I don't record all at once, because there's no way I could do that. Each of the sections I were recorded in slow motion. Very discouraging. And I didn't, I, I thought there was something wrong with my iPhone because it would start off, the section would start off playing normal speed and then it would go into slow motion. And I thought, what is going on here? So I posted a story on Instagram about it and a couple of people told me, that's probably because you were recording in slow motion. And guess what? That's what, what it was, was. So this is take number two for this video. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Joey's Scarf. Today is Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. My name is Linda and you can find me all over as Linda Grace and that's Linda with a Y. Joey Scarf, this podcast is a knitting, crocheting, yarn podcast, and this is episode 47. If, uh, for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, may not know why the podcast is named the way it is. So Joey's Scarf is, is named in honor of my son, Joe who passed away almost nine years ago from colon cancer. He um, was a young man in his, in his early 30s, uh, had just uh, had a child with his wife, and uh, Domani, his son, was a, a little over a year old when Joe passed away. So Joe got to celebrate Domani's first birthday with him. And, uh, Sunday was Domani's 10th birthday, so it was an emotional day for sure. Today I am going to share some finished objects with you, a couple of works in progress. Uh, last episode I talked about a children's book that I had written, two children's books that I had put together for my granddaughter who was five and six at the time five one year, six the next year. It was, I had a lot of fun putting it together. Um, and I worked with an illustrator from New Zealand, no less. Um, found her on Etsy and she and I collaborated and we, we were able to put these two books together. And it, w it was quite an experience and I learned a lot. So in last episode, I said that I was going to give away two two of the books to two different people and then a little later on I will announce the winner winners of of the books but for now um, let's get on with some knitting okay also in the last episode I talked about a, a little project that I'm doing around mid March when the COVID uh, virus was making us all stay inside, the lockdown happened. I, of course, I'm always knitting, but I had started to knit um, these little shorty socks. And when I knit the first pair, I thought of an idea that to help me through this uh, horrible time that we're, we're experiencing all over the world, um, and to cope with being inside and not being able to, to socialize or see my children, um, I, I decided to um, have a goal for myself with these shorty socks. And I just randomly picked the number 100. So I thought I would, uh, the goal was to knit 100 pair of these shorty socks, all different colors and maybe some different sizes. Um, and I like doing the shorty socks because they're a quick knit and I feel like I've accomplished something when I, when I complete two, two socks. 
Um, and it's been a fun, fun goal so far. There's no time. I don't have a time limit. So this could go on for years. Hopefully I'll be around for years <laughs> to finish this. Uh, so I'm going to share some of uh, the socks with you. I've So far I've knit 21 pair. And if you'd like to see all 21 pair, um, I have a hashtag on Instagram called um, 100 pair of shorty socks. And you could see all 21 pair. So since last episode, I've knit five more pair and I'm going to show you those five pair. Okay, so one of the pair is um, this pair, which I did in um, Barocco DK. I decided to try a heavier weight sock to see how that would go. And uh, they're very warm and cozy. And I thought, you know, for the winter time to scuff around the house, they would, they would make a, a, a good house sock. And I like the colors, the brown and the blue. Yeah, so this is one of the five that I've knit since, since last episode. And this is a standard sock recipe, cuff down. The only difference, I guess, is that the leg is a little shorter. Okay, next is this pair. And this is uh, Knit Picks Stroll Tweed. And I like the, the tweed. It, it reminds me of an old fashioned pair of socks for some reason. I don't know why, but it just does. I just love this color combination too. So this is Knit Picks Stroll Tweed and the color is Garnet Heather. Pair number two. And then we have um, the Halloween socks. That's what these remind me of. Halloween socks with the orange and the purple. And these so the, this yarn is from a collection by Legacy Far. I always get this messed up. Leg Legacy Fiber Arts. There, I said it. And they were offering um, something called a micro sock kit, which was really ideal for my shorty socks because it came with a 50 gram skein and then a 20 gram mini. And that's perfect for these little shorties because I don't even use 50 grams for these. So it, it really works, works out well when I can find 50 gram skeins. But a lot of these socks that I'm knitting are, uh, I'm using up yarn from um, 100 gram skeins of yarn uh, that I had left over um, from stash and trying to trying to work through the stash but I had to have these because I thought thought this was a neat neat idea and this colorway is called Win Winnie Sanderson now all of the information that I think you might be interested in I will put in the down bar below Halloween socks. Okay, this pair is, is um, the yarn I'm using, I used for this is, is a, from a new to me dyer. And I found her on Instagram. Someone had posted a, a picture of yarn that they had bought from her. And I thought her yarn was really cool looking. And this is, reminds me of a summer uh, summertime sock, like it reminds me of melons, watermelon, honeydew, cantaloupe. And the name of this company or dyer, Vicky, Vic, Vicky Vera is her name. And um, again, this came in a 50 gram, gram skein, which I like. And this colorway is Forbidden Fruit. 
very colorful, right? Okay, the last of the five is a pair that I knit for Ross, a little shorty pair for Ross. And I must say that he does like and wear the socks that I make him. And who wouldn't want them? They're so comfy. <laughs> yeah, so that's the last pair, socks for Ross. Okay, so last time, as I mentioned, I talked about the two books that I put together for my, my granddaughter, Bella. And I realized when I was watching the last episode that I really didn't show very much of the book, of the books. This is one of them, and it's called Igby and the Pink Bird. And, um, and this one is, uh, I'll, read it. I'll read just the first page. This story is about a little girl named Igby. Igby loved her name. She did not know anyone else who had the same name as she did. She felt very special. Igby was five years old. She lived in a white house with her mommy, daddy, and her little brother, Ardby, and her four kitty cats. The youngest kitty, Sumby, was her favorite, though. Sumby and Igby would sit and talk for hours. No one but Igby knew that Sumby could talk. Igby's bedroom was upstairs. It was a cozy room with a window. She could sit and look out of her window and see the sun coming through the tops of the trees. At night, she saw the moon and the stars. So, the, where I got the name Igby um, is from Bella's initials. Isabella is really her first name. Isabella, her middle name is Grace, just like mine. And her last name starts with, with B, so Igby. And that's where that came from. So here she is looking out her bedroom window. And there's the little pink bird. The bird had pink wings and a pink tail. The rest of her feathers were white. Pink was Igby's favorite color. She always wore a pink ribbon in her long brown hair. Igby decided to name the bird Pink Bee. <laughs> There's a theme there. Pink Bee was happily singing and chirping away. Igby loved to sing, so she started to sing along with the bird. Sumbi, the cat, heard the singing and jumped up on the windowsill to ask Igby what she was doing. Well, Sumbi, I am singing along with that little pink bird sitting in the tree. Sumbi looked out the window and smiled. She loved looking at birds, too. There's the bird. But anyway, this is um, a story about a mama bird and how she takes care of her little babies. And that was that book. And then the second one is called Igby, Igby and Sumbi's Great Adventure. So both Igby, the, the, the girl, and Sumbi, her little kitten, each go on an adventure of their own and each find their way back to each other. And some, some be learns the lesson of how home, it's great to be home. So those are the two books. And I did pick two winners to get each one of the books. for. And the first winner is Linda E. Um, and the second winner, winner is Sally's Backyard. So if you can contact me, um, you can message me on Instagram. Um, and uh, I'll also put my email address in the bar below if you want to contact me via email. So those are the two books. So here's another finished object that I made. It's a little bandana cowl. 
and I had seen um, Andrea, the cat lady, um, she had knit one, and I really liked the way it looked, so I decided to make one. It's, it's a, a quick knit. Um, uh, the, the pattern that I chose, I don't know if this is the one she made, but this is Bandana Cowl number four by Place Marker, Cleo Malone. I think it's a free pattern on, on Ravelry. Pretty sure that it is. Um, for mine, I held two strands of yarn together. I think. Not sure if, oh, I think, I don't know if, if it was sock yarn held together, but this is held it together with this um, alpaca that I have, a bunch of this alpaca. And I've figured out that I'm not a fan of alpaca, but I love the colors and how soft it is, but then when I go to knit with it, I'm just not a fan. So I'm trying to use it up in other ways. And what I've discovered, what I discovered, even though I love this pattern, the alpaca is itchy on my skin. So I'm put it on. It looks great. looks great, but it itches like crazy. So I don't know, either wear it with a turtleneck <laughs> or this was an, exper an experiment gone wrong. I will make this pattern again though, I really like it. So another one of my finished objects is this shawl and it the name of the pattern is called Gabriel's Wings, and it's by Angela Robert. Very nice pattern to knit. Um, I started off following her pattern, and maybe I'll stick a picture of me wearing this so you can get a better idea of what it looks like on. Um, but anyway, I started off following the pattern as written. And very easy, nice knit. And then when I got to here, I decided to add some striping. So I did a stockinette stripe, and then I did a garter stitch stripe, and then just ended it with these, with this. Anyway, <clears throat> this is the Gabriel's Wings pattern, and I don't, I probably mentioned that I will put all the information of things that I think you might want to know more about in the down bar below, so I'll put all that information about this down there too. Really nice pattern, and this does not scratch my neck, so I will be wearing this. The yarn that I used is, again, is the Knit Picks uh, Stroll Tweed. I don't have the band, so I don't know which colors these are, but I thought they went well together. It's like a blue-gray and a gold, but that's Gabriel's Wings. One of my works in progress is um, a fun knit, but it's a long-term project. So my son Jimmy, I had made one of these for him a couple of years ago, and he recently told me that it has gotten a lot of use and it's time for a new one. Would I make him a new one? And I said, of course. Um, and I like doing this because I get to use up a lot of my stash. So this is what I'm making for Jimmy. It's a blanket and it's the garter squish Blanket by Stephen West, and it's a free Ravelry download. And it is going to use a lot of yarn, a lot of leftover stash that I have. I'm using DK weight, 
and I'm using two strands held together, which is what the pattern calls for, to give it this, I guess, marled effect. Um, it is very squishy. I've made a lot of these as gifts, and they are well loved. Um, I get to use a lot of different colors, which I like, so it doesn't get boring. And this is going to be, a bit, I'm going to be making 15 of these blocks. So one, two, three, four, I have a third of the way done. So again, this is a long-term project. Hoping to get it done by Christmas for you, Jim. If, I know you don't watch this, but. <laughs> so that's my Jimmy blanket. All right, so before I show you my last work in progress, um, I decided that it's time for another giveaway. And as I'm going through my stash, I realized, I don't know if I've probably mentioned this before, that I have a lot of orange yarn. And I <clears throat> also have figured out that I don't like to knit with orange yarn. I like to buy orange yarn, but I don't like to knit with it. It's strange, right? <clears throat> so I am going to be giving away in honor of Halloween, two skeins of orange yarn that have been in my stash for a while. Um, this one <clears throat> is by the Kate, Kate May Fiber Company. And its colorway is Sunburn. And it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And I thought those were nice Halloween colors. And the second one is by Leg Legacy Fiber Arts, again. Um, this is a, a vintage one. The colorway is Needles Up. And I think this is one of their first Needles Up little uh, festivals that they had in, near Rhinebeck. And then again, a nice uh, Halloween color. So in order to win, I'm going to pick two winners. Um, comment below and you could do me a favor by liking the video and also by subscribing. I won't know if you do either, but I'll know if you subscribe, but it's not necessary to win. Just comment below and tell me, um, no, you can just mention Halloween in the comment, that's all. I don't need a dissertation on Halloween. <laughs> So good luck. Right, my final work in progress is how I'm going to be making this. It's called Leaves on the, on the Line. And I am participating in a knit along. Um, Leaves on the Line by Ashcroft Hem, Hemsol Designs. I am participating in a knit along um, for the Victoria Knits podcast. Hello, Victoria. And she's doing a have yarn will travel make along. And the cow be began October 1st and ends January 31st. So there's a long time uh, to do this. Now the, the purpose of the knit along is, the premise of it is because of the virus, a lot of us have had vacation plans that we were not able to go on. So the purpose or the premise is if you could go on a vacation, where would you go? Hi, Ross. Um, so I chose this pattern because usually in the fall, Ross and I um, will go to at least one yarn festival. We've done uh, Rhinebeck a couple of times. We did the Maryland Sheep and Wool. There's the New Jersey Sheep, sheep and Wool. And of course, this year we were not able to do any of them. So this shawl reminds me of the fall colors that we would see if we were able to go, and also, of course, all the pretty yarn. 
So I started it. And this is what I've gotten so far. And actually, I'm almost done with it. Because it's, it's a short little capelet, I guess. But I just love these. Now, this orange I don't mind working with because this is more of a rust orange. And I like it. I like the way it looks with. Yeah, I like the way it looks with this colorway, which is, these are the two colorways. This one I'm not sure because I don't have the band, but this one is Chelsea Lux, and it's just beautiful. I think it's just, the, the name of the colorway is Artist's Palette, and I'm not sure that she makes this anymore because this, again, was in my stash, but it's really pretty. And the two of them together are just perfect together. So I think I'll finish this before January 1st. I, I'm, I'm liking this pattern too. It's a little written a little differently, but I, I, I figured it out and she's got it charted and she's also got it written out. So I can use both, either or, or both if I want to. I don't know if you can see the pattern. But that's it. That's what I've been working on. All right. So Ross decided to join me for to say hello. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> so what have we been up to? Oh, we have we have been masking. True. We have been eating at new restaurants. True. Yes. We not around the corner from our hometown town. No. We went last week. We went to a couple of days well last weekend. We went to Cape May. On the way to Cape May. <laughs> so you're going to sing? No, Ray can sing it. <laughs> so yeah, we, we decided to take a ride to Cape May, which is about an hour and 15 minute drive from here. And it was a lovely day. It was beautiful. One of the reasons we went down there was to go shopping. And uh, they have an outdoor, they call it a mall, but it's just... A brick lined little section that you can walk down up and down and they have all these little shops that you can go in and out of and it, it, there were a lot of people there but I have to say every single person had a mask on everyone I hate to I don't hate to say it I'm quite a, enthused because that means people are starting to show and, and display a uh, an interest uh, in living that they hadn't before. Right. And then when we went to the restaurant, which um, is a well-known restaurant in Cape May, the Lobster House, they have this like shell of a boat, I guess it is, right? That The hull. A hull, yes, the yeah. hull of a boat um, for outdoor dining. And you're, you're you know, right on the water. And uh, we didn't have a very prime seat. <laughs> we were like on the other side, but it was still nice. It was okay. Got the idea. Yeah, so that's what we, when we've gone to our local Bayfront restaurant too, which is another, it's, it's really nice to be sitting on the water and watching the boats and all of that stuff just to get out of the house because we really haven't been seeing anybody. No. Oh. We, we see them on uh, videotapes or, yeah, on the, or movies or in a background somewhere. We see them on hey. FaceTime. <laughs> yeah. Socialize via the FaceTime or phone. Too. Haven't seen the kids in a while because the kids are out and about. My granddaughter's working now at Old Navy they're too busy. They're too busy. Kids have gone back to in 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 the classroom school for a couple of days a week, so I think we're kind of being more cautious. I don't know if we're overly cautious or not, but So what else? 
What else has been going on? Oh. We had a sad experience. A couple Very of sad, sad experiences. Tough, tough couple of days. So Ross, um, Ross's only sis- living Two. sister, Joan, passed away last Saturday. And she was, she lived in a town called Bemis Point, New York, which is northwest New York, almost almost into Pennsylvania, Erie, Pennsylvania. Well, it's on the state line. Yeah. <laughs> and it's about a seven hour drive from our house. And she's, she's was quite, she's been quite ill. And unfortunately, we we're not able to see her recently because of the virus business. Um, we had hoped to see her in the springtime, but uh, fortunately, she she had a lot of a lot of things going on with her health. It was still a shock. We Ross spoke with her every single day, and she used to call her your hero. Right. That's right. Why was she your, your hero? Even though you're the older brother. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough, tough to talk about. It is tough to talk about. It was just something very simple, very silly. But uh, over the years, I'd. I've been uh, very complimentary to both of my sisters because I finally realized how grounded they were and smart about a lot of things that I don't really think about or care about too much. But I made a concerted effort for them for a half month, and I real then I realized that I had two real gems of sisters. So anyway, we're gonna miss <clears throat> Miss Joan. She was every time we talked to her, which was every day. She always had a smile in her voice. Was very encouraging. Loved her brother very very much, and we're gonna miss her. And that that was very sad and. Because of the virus, again, the, there won't be a service right now, but maybe a memorial um, celebration of her life at some point. All right. So we've been watching George Gently, which is a English mystery taking place in the late 60s, early 70s. You like the cars? I like the cars. I don't know. I, I can't identify him. Well, those, those were British cars. Yeah. So they're, they're going to be unknown to us. Right. But what's interesting is if you look at the cars on the screen yeah. and then you, you look back and say, what, what's my old car doing in a movie? <laughs> Why, you had cars like that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had a, I had a little TR4, yeah. TR4A. Yeah. And of course TR3s. the big bouffant hairdos and... Uh, The clothing, the the mini skirts, and the wild patterns. So, so it's kind of neat to to watch. We are. I am a Big Brother fan, so we're we're in the middle of watching that. But other than that, we try and put the news on in the morning. And get out of the way. And get out of the way, and then maybe in the evening to see if anything's changed. So we're yattering and chattering and. What have you Black been up to lately? Yeah, what have we been up to lately? I mean, in this pandemic era? Pandemic. Pandemic. Yeah. It's just, sometimes it gets to me. Yeah. And sometimes I want to just run out and scream. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, we've been walking. We have been walking quietly, a little here, a little there. Yes. Most of it, 
good, healthy walking. Mm -hmm. um, and we also each got new eye watches. You know what you do? Here's you take a, this eye and you put it over this eye. Right, Can you put your eye over your other eye so you have an eye watch? Oh, upside down. That's me. That's my emoji. I love my eye, my Apple Watch. You don't care about it that much. It's cute. <laughs> but I really like it. I didn't think I would like it, but I do. It monitors your sleep. It monitors your exercise. Hi, Linda. <laughs> we have walkie-talkies on there if we want. Um, we can message. And Siri is great. So, yeah, I would recommend the Apple Watch. Um, the one I'm wearing is what they call the Modest Sleep. They came out with a Modest Sleep priced one, but it's still... What made it? What bucks. made it modestly? Because it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles. It doesn't have like I can't, I can't do the oxygen level. I can't do an EKG. I can't do uh, the heart fibrillation thing. Where yours has all the fancy stuff on it. Well, that's because we're going to open up a veterinary shop. <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> we'll administer to cats and dogs. <laughs> okay. All right, so I think that's it for today. Oh, and I'm just about talked out now. We're going to see what's what here any minute now. Any minute now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sounds good. So until next time, ta-ta. Ta-ta.